Tonight, organized labor in showdown talks with President Akufuado over SNIT's decision to sell 60% stake in four top hotels to his agri minister's company. We have the latest with organized labor resolved to demand nothing less than outright cancellation of the transaction amidst divisions on the front of labor itself on the raging controversy. I will not go. I will not go. Because it's easy. I suspect them. I suspect them. I suspect them. What, what, are, they, what, what are they doing? It's as simple as just tell people that, look, employment minister, make sure this whole thing is stopped. Plus, former MPP National Chairman Freddie Blay has been fighting off allegations he and his sons corruptly acquired the beachfront of Labadi Beach Hotel. But his accuser, not tongue MP, Samokujita Blakwa, has called his bluff. You know, I was surprised that he wants to give me a full week, seven days. I thought he would just proceed to court. When you're armed with the truth, you fear no foe, you fear no court, you fear no judge. This is Top Story with Evans Mensa. Well, tonight, organized labor is locked in a showdown talks with President Akufuado over SNIS' decision to sell 60% stake in four top hotels to a company owned by his Greek minister, Brian Champon. John News is learning organized labor called an urgent meeting early today to adopt a common position ahead of the talks. We understand the leadership resolved to stand their ground and demand nothing less than an outright cancellation of the transaction. We'll take you live shortly to the Jubilee House where my colleague Latif Idrisu is standing by. Uh, there have also been divisions on the front of Labour itself on this raging controversy ahead of this meeting tonight. We have that also for you. Also, uh, today there's been a major press conference addressed by the former national chairman of the MPP. He's also been brought into this whole controversy because of the allegations that his sons have been involved in corrupt acquisition of the beach front of the Badi Beach Hotel. Of course, the top uh, uh, hotel in the list of hotels currently being uh, sold by SNIT. 60% of that is going to go to uh, Brian Champon's company. We have that also for you. Several moving parts today on this raging controversy. I want to take you to the Jubilee House right now where my colleague Latif Idrisi is standing by for us. Latif, is this meeting underway? Yes, Evans, we can report that the meeting is underway. Uh, as part of the agenda for this meeting, we know that uh, they will be discussing the constitution of the SNIT board and also the property of SNIT, which, according to some members of organized labor, have not lived up to expectation. So these are some of the two issues on the table as the meeting, I said, is ongoing in the Jubilee House. We are on standby and we'll bring you up to speed date on what transpires here, Ivan. And this meeting is with the president himself? Again, it's with the president himself, this meeting. Yes. Never. And Latif will stand by for us. We'll bring you the very latest once we know more from that particular meeting. But it's a, a, a fair bit. We're learning already uh, from organized labor ahead of today's meeting. And remember that ahead of the meeting today, uh, the major controversy erupted when uh, one of the groups within organized labor, the Ghana Federation of uh, Labor, accused TUC of complicity in a sale of the of the four top hotels. Listen to the General Secretary of the Ghana Federation of Labor, Abraham Kungsing, who actually last week served notice he was not going to be part of today's meeting. I will not go. I will not go. Because it's easy. I suspect them. I suspect them. I suspect them. What are they, what, what are they doing? The four people The four people who are serving on the on the uh, network. How they were chosen, we don't know. Mm. We have raised issues. We have raised concerns. We don't do that. This search intelligence Make sure that you do diligent 
you make sure the integrity and the competence of people that you are selecting are taken into account. They don't send anybody there. Yeah, okay. What I mean, is it? Well, Mr. Kumsing, you, you want, the, again, and you'll tell them when you meet them, and, and I presuppose that this is something that happens quite regularly, yourselves meeting uh, organized labor, you should be represented there. So you suspect that what, they themselves are somehow in on this whole transaction? You see, I, I, I suspect the leadership, not the TUC. The leadership. Itself. You suspect yes, them, you suspect them of, what, of what exactly? No, competitive in, in, in uh, this whole thing that we are all talking about, this sale of... Of, of, look, of, snitch, of snitch shares the, in the hotels. The, the, the discussions we are told that when we went, we met the, the, the Minister of Employment. Yeah. This discussion started way back, I think, 2018 or something. Yes. You see, so even the, the, the Minister was even blaming our representative. My colleague Kojo Brace is with me in the studio. He's been working his sources within organized labor ahead of this meeting. There was a meeting earlier today, was it not? Yeah, there was. Uh, I mean, they called a meeting because the president wanted to meet what he termed the core leadership of organized labor to discuss what's going on re in relation to the sale of these hotels. So there was a meeting this morning for organized labor to then fashion out what they intend to tell the president at this particular meeting. Okay, and we've just been playing uh, Abraham Kumsin's point there uh, with the Ghana Federation of Labor. He had been very clear on the subject that he suspected uh, TUC. He was not going to go. He's going to boycott it. Mm. Uh, was he part of today's meeting? Well, so I can confirm that, yes, the, the Ghana Federation of Labor w uh, w was there. They attended this particular meeting because they wanted to make their voices heard. I don't know what changed at the back door for him to agree that he wanted to be part of this meeting. You remember that he said he was not going to be part of the meeting, uh, you know, at the presidency. So probably he fulfilled his part of no meeting uh, at the president. But again, he was there at this particular meeting today for them to decide what they were going and to do. And what was the resolution? Now, the resolution was simple that they should tell the president to stop the sale of snet so cancel it exactly okay. they are not going to change their their demand their demand is that don't sell the hotels let us still remain in the possession of snet uh, angel kabonu uh, joins us now he is the president of the national association of graduate teachers a, a very prominent member of mm -hmm. organized labor he's on now on zoom mr kabonu uh, I, I i i believe you are not personally in this meeting but you have been fully briefed about this meeting today yes absolutely and what was the position again no the position was pure and simple that it is inappropriate for the sale to go on another information we we're going to give his excellency the president was that the sale should be stopped a simple message indeed but as a message that you've already conveyed to the president's uh, minister responsible for employment and nothing has changed. Why do you think that it will hold sway when it comes to meeting the president and change his mind on the subject? Well, when the president invites you to attend a meeting, you cannot tell the president you were not going to go. Regardless of what has transpired in the past, you have to be at that meeting. And again, you just have to reiterate to the president the position that is a reflection of the organized labor position. So leadership will not be able to say they were not going to go, but the earlier meeting affirmed the position of organized labor. That it is, you see, uh, Evans, I, I don't know what is wrong with us as a people. We campaign to the people of this country to come and make this country a better place. We come into government the structures that existed before we came into government, we think we have it as a matter of right to acquire those structures for our personal and private use. I mean, does this whole thinking, is, is this whole thinking right at all? This culture of people come to gov coming into government Coming to meet structures that have been built in the past, they did not make the structures better because that is the purpose for which we elected them in the first place, to come and improve upon what we have. Then they come and tell us 
that in the course of their administration, what they were supposed to put right was not put right, then they can acquire it privately and put it right privately for private use. The whole morality, the whole morale offends pure reasoning. And I don't know how, as a country, we can accept this. Look, for me, as I talk to you right now, the situation goes beyond snakes. If we want to do audit of state property that has been acquired by people, state property that has been acquired by people for private use, you will be shocked. You will be amazed. I don't have a problem if somebody goes to acquire private property. But state property. And somebody asks the question. If an individual who is in government would do it, and that individual is an appointee of the president, why won't the president appoint that individual to go and have it done? Somebody is talking about ECG. Oh, we as a government cannot run ECG. But we as people within government can run ECG. We as a government cannot run Ghana, uh, 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 Ghana Water Company. But we as a people in government can run Ghana Water Company. How does this rhyme with our reasoning? On this subject, though, of the hosp uh, of the hotels that SNIT is selling, organized labor, you had an opportunity to stop this at the board level, did you not? You, you see, missed that opportunity. The representatives on the board are not do not constitute majority representative. The SNIT board. It's made up of appointees of government. In fact, appointees of government are, are, are in the majority. So even if the four representatives raise objection, and that objection is defeated in a vote, then you have a situation where by the fact that they've sworn an uh, oath of secrecy, they cannot run to the public ends because then it becomes a collective decision. Well, but they're representing organized labor, yourself and myself. This is a fight you're waging now. You have taken it to the yeah, president but, but, tonight. You could have taken it two years but, ago. Yes, but you see, let me say that because while, though they represent us on the board and they report to uh, organized labor on the board, there are so much that is hidden. Look, don't you realize that just recently the chief executive was dismissed by government? And another chief executive was appointed. It's a reflection of the rampus that was going on within SNIT with regards to some of these sales. There was high level of controversy. There was high level of controversy as to how the operations of SNIT should go. That culminated in the dismissal of the former chief executive and the appointment of the current one. And a lot of information that labor is having to do, where do you think they are coming from? They are coming from SNIT, from people who are opposed to certain decisions that are being taken. In all honesty, when you met today as organized labor, considering that you've made this call at a press conference weeks ago that canceled this deal, you've met the president's minister responsible for labor, Nothing is happening. In fact, Snit, from what we understand, is proceeding with the uh, transaction conversations. And there is a concern uh, from your own uh, camp. Uh, Abraham Kumsing expresses that, that if nothing is done immediately, they may actually close this deal before you can actually get any action from the president. Do you sincerely believe that the president wants to do anything about this, as in cancel this deal? 
Evans, let me make a promise to you. If the management of SNIT becomes intransigent in this matter, some of us will make a, 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 a move a motion at the platform of organized labor. And I can assure you, they will be surprised the outcome. SNIT belongs to the workers of this country. It is a workers' contribution that has made SNIT what it is. SNIT does not belong to a clique of politicians. In fact, all these years, we should have fought for the change in the governance structure of SNIT that we have not done. If they become intransigent, some of us will move motion at organized labor that we will have to sleep, occupy SNIT premises until such a time that they see reason to do the right thing. And you've made the point there. Isn't this a decision of SNIT's board and management? Why take it to the president? We, uh, it's not, it is not Labour that took it to the president. The president invited Labour. It's not the Labour that, that took it to the president. The president invited Labour. But, but you are asking the president. I mean, your decision this morning, which you're taking into the meetings, are you going to ask him to cancel it? I mean, yeah, but because he because he's, he's invited he's invited you to a meeting. When you go to the you you anticipate the reason for the meeting, which is on the seals. So you have to prepare a response to the president. And you've made a point about what you are prepared to do to move this motion. But when organized labor met today as a collective, did you decide your next step if you do not get a cancellation? No, organized labor's meeting this uh, uh, morning was to garner consensus from representatives as to the position that they should take when they meet the president. That was the, uh, the, 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 the core purpose of this morning's meeting. But you know there is the possibility that your demand will not be met. There must certainly have been. So what is... I will, be, I will be surprised for the president to invite leadership, for leadership to take to the president the position of the entire uh, plenary, for the president to ignore the advice of our leaders. I'll be very, very surprised. If he does... Then we will have to reconvene and take the next step. How soon after tonight would you do that if you don't hear from him uh, favorably? Oh, I, I, I am very confident that the president is going to heed to the call of labor. I'm very, very confident about that. And I know the president will not want to appoint another ambassador at large. I can assure you that. And your confidence is based on? Oh, the fact that... There is the need to listen to reason and popular opinion. And, and, and just before you go, I mean, before you came on, we've heard from the Federation of Labor. Uh, they had raised concerns about, what, in essence, they were going to boycott this. I understand that Abraham Kumsi, the general secretary, was with you today. Have you closed ranks now on this subject? Because they were accusing fingers being pointed at TUC, for example, for being complicit in the matter. Have you all closed ranks now? No, Abraham Kumsin's position is a principal position that there is even no need to even be with the president since the president has listened to our position in the public domain and that there was no need for him to go there. And that position is respected by the entirety of labor that, well, if that is his position. But don't forget, he was at the meeting to reiterate his position today. And his position is not different from the position that he's espoused in the past, that the sales is wrong. So, Abraham Kunsen's position does not indicate a break at the level of leadership, you know. So, you know, in the labor level, we have different labor centers. In fact, currently we have three labor centers, Federation of Labor, TUC, and the Forum. You know, so... Uh, that we can differ. Uh, he has taken his position. His position seems to be very radical, but that is how he's taking the position, and we respect the position. If we had, if Labour, if the, if the front had been broken, he would not have been at that meeting this morning. Uh, thank you very much, Angel Kabonu. He is the president of the National Association of Graduate Teachers. <laughs> Well, the
there are further developments on this unfolding uh, drama around the uh, sale of the 60% shares in four top hotels tonight involving the former chairman, former national chairman of the Gabon New Patriotic Party. Uh, he's been accused by Samakujuta Blackwa. You know him. He's a man who has been waging this campaign to get SNIT to back off uh, the sale of uh, the four top hotels. And he had accused uh, Freddie Blay and his sons of uh, corruptly acquiring the beachfront of Labadi Beach Hotel, which is the uh, crown jewel in the uh, in the package being offered away by SNIT. He called the news conference today. My colleague, Papa Niashali, was there for us. And Freddie Blay did not only call an ordinary uh, press conference, he deliberately took you guys to the beachfront area. Yeah. And Evans. gave you a tour. Yeah, he gave us a tour. And... Just so you know, if you know traditional Labadi, there was just this piece of land right after after them. So that was exactly where we were, just before the bridge that crosses over the lagoon that you find there. So from right from there, he came inside first, went to park his car there at the Polo Club, and then came out, came to walk us through the level of development that he had to go through with the, with the intent of getting us to appreciate how different their entity is from the Labadi Beach Hotel, how at least some wire mesh separates their development from the Labadi Beach Hotel. And again, takes us all to the rest of the establishment. Then finally, we end up at a point where he tells us that the impression that he, uh, uh, Polo Beach Club, as it is, that belongs to one of his sons, which he clarified, and not all of his sons, had only a small portion of the beachfront sharing a wall with the Labadi Beach Hotel. They were not the only people that were there. I counted more than five other entities, including Labadi Beach Hotel, which had a small portion that it ex exclusively, uh, exclusively owned to themselves at that place. We tried to even go and stand and we were asked to leave there because we didn't have permission to be there uh, at that time. So that was the intent behind this particular tour to get us to see how small of a piece of land that they owned as Polo Beach Club. Mm. And he's also been explaining how they acquired this property. Yes, um, Evan. So he says that he alludes to their agreement. He didn't tell us what form it was, whether it was written arrangement or it was a gentleman's agreement by word of mouth. But he says that they had an agreement. His son had an agreement with the hotel to hold programs, events at the beachfront. However, over the years, uh, that had had to change. And therefore, uh, they rather resorted to going to see the kinmakers who gave them that piece of land. Or doing something together in 2019. And from 2019 on, they were making money, yes. We were also making money. And they said, I'm talking about we, because I'm talking about my... But at some stage, they said they wanted more. And the young man says, no, you can't have more. I'm doing everything else. And, and he said, then in that case, we can't use our park. In that case, we will not allow you to use some of our facilities. Unfortunately, the La Tradition Council made available the park. And he's operating on his own, without reliance on them. But even then, when this beach club is operating, the hotel is making more money out of it. It's better that we all together cooperate and work together because it will invite more people, respect, it invites uh, a lot of guests, tourists. It is the best way to go about it. So we, they should have agreed to do that. Instead of making it look like as if they want to drive away. Are you willing to work with them again? I'm not the one doing that. And he maintains he's a son uh, who is in charge of it. He has very little to do with this particular uh, project and property uh, sitting at that beachfront uh, there at the Labadi Beach Hotel. So the, the accusation is that this is state capture. He uses his, uh, his influence as a politically exposed individual, former national chairman, to obviously facilitate the acquisition. He denies that. Yeah, he, he denies that categorically. He says that that cannot be the situation uh, because they already, there was an engagement with the hotel which had rather deteriorated into something else and for which his sons resorted to the proper quarters, he says. So that definitely had nothing to do with him, although he says he, he ordinarily does not even come to the place for anything except when he's called upon by any of his sons to come and witness an event. Okay, and he, when this matter first came up, had Seb notice, was going to sue some of the black. I believe this was two weeks ago. Has he done that yet? He hasn't. In the question that was put to him, he says that this week, possibly, he will file a case in court. Shouldn't have so, done it. Yeah, so, so what, what are you taking him to court? He's you will hear from me. You hear from me that within this week, definitely I'll take him to court over it.
Uh, and I want to bring in some good Mr. Blackwell himself, who joins us now on the line. Mr. Blackwell, uh, so we, we're hearing now from uh, the former national chairman of the MPP uh, holding a press conference today at that beach front. Uh, we raised questions about his point is that there is no wrongdoing there. It's one son uh, who legitimately acquired it, and he still maintains his point that he will still be filing the suit against you. Well, good evening, Evans. Good evening to all the listeners of Joy. It is important to stress that this is a matter which came to my attention as I continue to carry out my constitutional mandate of parliamentary oversight. This is a campaign that is grounded in protecting state assets and in seeking the welfare of all Ghanaian workers. There is nothing personal about this, and there are no malicious intentions, as Mr. Blair would want to suggest. After your tour today, you have observed that every single information I put out on this matter is accurate. I am the one who broke the story that, as we speak, Labadi Beach Hotel has lost control over its entire beachfront. The tour today confirms exactly that. The tour also confirms that the projects that have been pursued by the son of Mr. Freddie Blay, and it is interesting that an adult in this matter will continue to rely on his father we hear Mr. Freddie Blay more on SNIT and this acquisition of the beachfront and the attempt to purchase the SNIT hotels more than we hear him on GMPC, but, but you where, he says, his where he says as board chairman. Yeah, but you mentioned now, Freddie Blay's name. He's entitled to indeed defend himself and clear that name. Is his reputation at stake also? The question is, where are his sons and why are they not speaking directly? It is important, even in this discussion, that we raise the missing link. And that missing link is Labadi Beach Hotel, the board and the management. Why are they not speaking on this matter? Have you asked yourself, why did, La why did the board and management of Labadi Beach Hotel, hmm, after they discovered that their former managing director by name Rene Vincent Ernst had apparently colluded with Mr. Freddie Blay's son to deny Labadi Beach Hotel that access to his beachfront. And they went to see some people they say they saw at the La Traditional Council and annexed that beachfront. Are you aware that Labadi Beach Hotel? instituted an internal inquiry, which, according to documents I have seen, confirmed that there was collusion. And that is why the joint venture agreement of 19th November 2019 was not respected. But, but and, Mr. Blackwell, on the and, matter of and, collusion, I haven't seen the document. But if so, if what you're saying is, is true, why is Labadi Beach Hotel not taking action? And it's also bothers some people's reputations here that I can very vouch for, especially when the company has not taken any action. It's difficult to, to hold that as, as true. You cannot say the company hasn't taken any action because as I speak to you, the, rock, the, the records will show that Labadi Beach Hotel has dismissed the managing director who engaged in that conduct. Indeed, the managing director, after his dismissal, is now in court demanding compensation of 40,000 euros. Yeah, but he, he admits that Laba he colluded, yes. and that, that is a serious allegation that is not proving, is it? Look, these are matters that are supported by documents, I've spoken to insiders, I've spoken to the management, I've spoken to board members, I'm armed with court documents, I've spoken to former business partners who have spilled the beans, who have confessed to me. I mean, 
I am well grounded. You know how we carry out our parliamentary oversight. Yeah, you, you may be, uh, but I haven't seen the documents. And because you're on a radio station, I, I can only ask the questions. And when I can verify, I'll definitely have to make uh, my input on the subject of people's reputation, especially when a part of this is before the courts. And if I may ask you, have you received that suit that Freddie Blaise says he will slap against you, Jesse? We spoke to him earlier today. I wonder if you've received any notes from his lawyers. I don't know why it's taking him so long. He gave me seven days. It's been more than two weeks. Uh, I remember that when he served notice that same day, I dared him to go ahead. I mean, uh, when you are armed with the truth, you fear no court, you fear no judge. I don't know why it's taking them so long. It's two weeks and counting. So I'm still waiting. And I know that at the end of any credible judicial process, I will be vindicated. The truth will be vindicated in this matter. Look, at the end of the day, state assets should be left as state assets. Politicians should back off. That is why I am sponsoring a private member's bill that politicians and politically exposed persons should stay away from state assets. Yeah, that uh, is the principle. And, and very quickly... That, 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 that is what this crusade is about. It's about like, very quickly, you know that organized labor is currently in this uh, showdown meeting with President Akufado. Just before you came on, we were talking to uh, Angel Carbon, who has given us a lot about what you're going to say to the president, asking him to counsel. Um, you, you, you share the... He was very optimistic that they would get the president to counsel. You share his optimism? Well, uh, I, I'm receiving intermittent reports. Uh, we, we were in touch uh, before they went into that meeting at 4 p.m. Um, let's see how it goes. Uh, this this is a very intransigent government. Um, it shouldn't have taken this long for them to back out of this deal. So I don't have that kind of optimism that uh, the respected uh, Mr. Kabunu has. Uh, but let's see. Let's see how it how 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 it goes. Uh, we would we would have a meeting right after the uh, meeting with the president, and uh, uh, we will be apprised. Uh, remember that we embarked on that demonstration last week, the hands of our hotels demonstration with partners, uh, traditional authorities, uh, various uh, uh, labor groups, and uh, various interest groups, and uh, we are still keeping that coalition intact. And so. Uh, we we wait to see uh, the outcome of of that meeting. But really, uh, the 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 democratic thing to do when thousands have poured out on the streets, when the overwhelming majority of Ghanaians have spoken, if truly this is a democracy, it is not some dictatorship, some autocracy, then the president will have no choice. I mean, the, these assets belong to workers. Workers say that they don't consent. Leave our hotels alone. I mean. You have no other option. Mm -hmm. And so I, I hope that the president will do the democratic and sensible thing in this matter and announce that he is backing off this transaction. Which okay. It's a transaction not in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the national interest. Look at all the revelations emerging now. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Freddie Blay is saying that his son offered between 150 and $200 million. We tells you that the claims Nate had made all along that the Honorable Brad Champon offered the highest uh, offer mm, of $61 million. Clearly, it's, 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 it's not a case. So even within the government, within the ruling party, you have all of these contradictions and the, the avalanche of constitutional breaches, legal breaches, the naked conflict of interest, the immorality, the unethical conduct. I mean, this is a deal which thinks to the high heavens yeah, I mean, Dr. Blackwell, thank you very much. And my colleague is there for us at Jubilee House, keeping a close eye on that meeting. And therefore, we are looking forward to the outcome. Uh, immediately, that meeting ends. Uh, stay with us. We'll bring that to you here on Joy 99.7 FM. Just been listening to some of Dr. Blackwell earlier. He had the uh, president of the National Association of Graduate Teachers still ahead.